Hi, very, very good morning to all. Myself Vishnu, I am from Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce to you my research topic on direct numerical simulation of lead rotating Rayleigh Banana convection. Uh, to be much more clear, I'll be studying, I'll be investigating uh, the effect of rotation shear uh, by rotating the top lid of a Rayleigh Banana convection system, basically a thermal convection system. So the motivation for such a study is uh, coming from technological uh, field. One of such field is the combustion in which we, in which there are, there is a premix soil combustor which, uh, which has a solar which imparts the uh, azimuthal velocity to the air fuel mixture and uh, under certain air uh, flow conditions uh, the, um, there is a uh, vortex breakdown bubble which is formed and such vortex breakdown bubbles are used for aerodynamic stabilization of the flame. So we need to study the dynamics of such vortex breakdown bubbles uh, to understand the stability of such flames, where to stabilize the flame as well as uh, to understand flame, flame flashback because the dynamics can of the vortex breakdown bubble can be such that it may move inside and it can cause flame flashback. So such a study is important uh, in this. Uh, so the dynamics of vortex breakdown uh, bubble need to be studied. So we simplified such a problem to a uh, thermal convection or basically a Rayleigh Banana convection system in which we have a cylinder in which we heat the bottom and cool the top and we start rotating the top lid. So by doing this so, uh, we have the uh, top lid being rotated and the fluid particles which are, which are adjacent to the top particle, uh, top lid, they, are, they get a, uh, they spiral out because of the centrifugal force which is imparted by the top rotating lid. And this causes the spiraling of the fluid particles from the, is from the center to outside, uh, outside near the side wall. And uh, due to the mass conservation, flow will happen from the uh, from the center of the cylinder towards the uh, top lid and thus there is a circulation of the flow and this closes this circle that means there is a swirling of fluid from the top uh, to the outside and it goes down and moves to, towards the inner region and moves to, towards the center upwards so the basic uh, thing to be noted is that how big how what the size of the cylinder that is uh, given by the aspect ratio and uh, how, how much are we heating, that's given by the Rayleigh number. How much are we rotating the top lid, that's given by the Rayleigh, uh, Reynolds number. And what's the fluid which you are concerned with, that's given by the Prandtl number. So to introduce my equation, we have the continuity, Navier-Stokes, and the energy momentum and the energy equation. So one of the difference which I, note, which I want to note is that we use a characteristic velocity because uh, here the velocity is imparted uh, both by the rotation of the lid as well as due to the free fall velocity due to thermal convection. So this, uh, you see that this is quite different from the other equation because it has the effect of Reynolds number as well as the Rayleigh number part. Uh, even in the energy equation, this is so. So this is a characteristic velocity which I'm concerned with. It's, it has both uh, rotation R omega, uh, R omega part as well as the free fall velocity due to the thermal convection. So uh, the Reynolds number is uh, defined as omega r square by mu. Uh, Rayleigh number is the usual definition of Rayleigh number. Uh, the way we have this B star parameter, but it's not an independent parameter. It can be formed out of the uh, it, it's other independent parameters such as Rayleigh number, Reynolds number, gamma, and Prandtl number. One thing to notice is that the gamma, which is the aspect ratio of the cylinder, is defined as h by r, which is quite different from aspect ratio, which is defined for uh, Rayleigh Brand convection systems, and the Prandtl number, which I mentioned earlier. So the numerical scheme which you're talking about is a central second order finite difference scheme in the space. Uh, it's in a cylindrical coordinates and the time step is by RK3, Renge Kota third order. So uh, you may be thinking what's the advantage of such a characteristic length. So if you do such a non-dimensionalization which includes both the free fall velocity as well as the rotation of the cylinder, the advantage is that we can study a range of uh, flow regimes in which on one extreme we have uh, if you put Reynolds number equals zero, we have the Rayleigh Banner connection flow and the equations concerned are with the Rayleigh Banner connection system. So in the other extreme, if you put uh, Rayleigh number equals zero, that means uh, if we shut off the heating and uh, that means there is no buoyancy force, we will obtain a equation for a, just a lead rotation uh, cylinder. So this uh, such, a study, uh, such a flow has been well studied and in a 1984, a SCUDI has done uh, experiments on uh, such a flow for different parameters and in this in this presentation I will call such a flow as a SQD flow. 
so we validated our code. Uh, one of the uh, validation which I use is like uh, without any buoyancy force because we find uh, any, uh, we didn't find any experiments on lid rotation uh, rotating RBC. So I shut off the buoyancy force and I could validate with the uh, SQDs experiments the stagnation points and our results will uh, will match the uh, stagnation points of SQDs experiments without any buoyancy force. And I couldn't find any of the literature for uh, lid rotation RBC, so I have to be satisfied with uh, validating the code with numerical results with the, which are done by Luke Dunderboard in 1987. And uh, however, you must note that uh, this uh, this is an this the uh, the computation which they did is for a axisymmetric case, but our code is a non-axisymmetric code. So if, while comparing our personal computation with the looped case, we find that the bottom stagnation point, even though it matches the overall structure of the vortex breakdown bubble, is not matching. So with this limited uh, literature, I'll proceed to uh, the investigation of the flow. The main uh, main thing which we are concerned in such a flow is how is a heat transferred. So we use a Nusselt number to quantify such a heat transfer. So uh, since I mentioned earlier, we use a different scaling. And due to this, our Nusselt number is be modified as Nusselt number LRRBC, that is lid rotating RBC, which includes the usual uh, uh, Nusselt number definition for a R RBC, as well as we have this force convection part. So one thing to note is that if you put Reynolds number equal zero, we'll obtain the Nusselt number definition for a Rayleigh Bernard convection system. So with this knowledge, we'll proceed to investigation of the flow uh, and the heat transfer. Yeah. So what we did is that uh, for a particular Rayleigh, Rayleigh number. So what our study I'm going to say is is about for a fixed gamma that is the fixed uh, aspect ratio of 2.5 and a fixed Prandtl number of 0.677. So in the top figure, we can see that data number is fixed as, fixed as 2 to 10 power 5, and we start rotating the top lid. So this 0 means it's a purely Rayleigh Bernard convection system. And we, we see that as we start increasing the rotation of the top lid, uh, the uh, heating or the he heat transfer, which is quantified the by the Nusselt number or the modified Nusselt number, starts increasing. Uh, so second by uh, second graph, it shows uh, if you fix the Reynolds number, that is if you start uh, start rotating without any heating, and if you go on heating, uh, it is quite obvious that heat transfer increases because we are going on increase in the Rayleigh number. So this this thing I will come to the end of my presentation. This is what we are mainly concerned with. So we looked into how we say uh, how is the hot fluid uh, uh, being convected due to this lead rotation. So this is the contour of uh, the temperature. Uh, the, actually, this is a slice of the temperature at a vertical plane. And we find that this is a RBC. And if you start increasing the Reynolds number, we find that the Nusselt number increases as well as the hot fluid get, um, uh, get confined to the top lower part of the domain. So we thought of uh, understanding, OK, how is a heat mechanism being possible in such a system? Because uh, the Nusselt number is is keeping on increasing as we start rotating. So we thought of uh, identifying plume structures in such a flow to understand what is the mechanism of heat transfer. So what we uh, uh, what we quantify identify as a plume is uh, been taken from a paper by Pierre et al. in 2016. Uh, this uh, criteria, these two criteria, is based on uh, the fact that a plume is a coherent structure which has a strong correlation between the upward uh, w velocity and uh, the temperature fluctuation. So by using these two criteria, we identified uh, points in our domain and we call such points as a plume. So in this figure, we can see that uh, like these structures are identified in the flow domain which satisfy these two conditions. So what we can observe is that uh, in, in, in a Rayleigh really, uh, Reynolds number 1000, these are for Rayleigh number, fixed Rayleigh number 2 into 10 power 5, and gamma equal to 2.5, and Prandtl number 0.677. So what we find that as you keep on increasing the Reynolds number, that is the, uh, as you keep on increasing the rotation speed of the top plate, you find that the plume's size is being decreased. However, one thing to remember is that, remind, I'll remind you is that Nusselt number keeps on increasing as Reynolds number is increasing. That, we, that means as you, as you keep on increasing the rotation speed, we earlier uh, uh, found, found that the Nusselt number increases, but the plume uh, size is decreasing. So with this, we can uh, infer that the heat transport by the plumes as you go on increasing the rotation, rotation is, being, uh, is being reduced. So there is something which transport heat. 
So we thought of investigating what is that we transfer heat at higher rotation. So maybe the flow field might uh, give a clue to that. So we looked into the flow field. These are basically the streamlines and the W velocity slices uh, in, in the vertical slices. So what we found is that uh, it's, it's quite clear that in a Rayleigh Bernard connection system where it's wherein we have Reynolds number equal to zero, that is we are not rotating the top plate. Uh, we just have the large scale circulation. That means uh, the, the fluid goes ascend from one side and descend to the other side. So, so we keep on increasing the rotation of the top plate. So what we found that uh, this uh, large scale circulation has been broken. Uh, we can see in this Reynolds number equals 100 case in, in which the large scale circulation is broken. And as you keep on increasing the Reynolds number, uh, there is a soil flow which is established at the center core. You can see the soil flow established in the center core. So if you further uh, keep on rotation, we find we found that at Reynolds number equals 2200, uh, there is a this uh, axial core or axial vortex core is breaks and, ax and a vortex breakdown bubble is formed. So here in this figure, we identify such a vortex breakdown bubble as a contour of W equals zero contours. So here we can see that vortex breakdown bubble is formed by breaking of this axial vortex. So uh, one thing is that the large scale circulation has been broken up by rotation. Moreover, uh, the flow has been shifted from a uh, convection dominated flow to a rotation dominated flow. So I will introduce some of the concepts for a, some of the flow patterns for a uh, rotation system. Uh, so basically we have the top plate rotation as I said, uh, as I earlier mentioned. Due to this top lead rotation, there is a azimuthal velocity which has been Im imparted, and this such a azimuthal velocity it causes a azimuthal flow, and we, there is a primary that we call as a primary flow. So, however, there is a secondary flow also, and because of the secondary flow, uh, there is a meridional flow which is set up in the system. So, basically, we have the primary flow and secondary meridional flow. So, and there is one more thing to notice is that. Uh, as I earlier mentioned, we have that uh, Rayleigh Banana system with the top plate rotating. So as you keep on rotating the top plate, the fluid, uh, the, there is a boundary layer actually in the top, uh, top, and such a boundary layer has been twisted due to the uh, top plate rotation. So due to this top plate rotation and twisting of the boundary layer, there is an Ekman layer which is formed. And such an Ekman layer actually, uh, due to the rotation of the uh, top plate, the fluid particles gain the centrifugal force. And being uh, and be uh, like uh, like a centrifugal pump, they are being they spiral out from the uh, top plate. So there is a flow setup. So basically, the uh, there is a Ekman layer over here, and uh, we have the uh, thickness of Ekman layer defined root of Ekman number in this flow. The basically, the fluid is deflected radially from the top uh, top plate to the uh, side walls. Uh, further, the Ekman layer uh, feeds something like a vertical uh, layer, which is called a Stevartsen layer. Actually, Stevartsen layer is a uh, sandwich structure between these two uh, thicknesses. So we can identify Stevartsen layer, and uh, the fluid which moves, uh, which, which get twisted from the top plate, get uh, deflected along the side walls toward, uh, moves towards the uh, towards the bottom in the Ekman layer, and get deflected in the bottom and moves towards the central core. So this is the whole loop, and the Ekman layer and the Stevartsen layer forms this uh, complete this total loop. So we can identify this uh, Stevartsen layer from this definition, which is a sandwich structure between these two uh, thicknesses. So we thought of investigating such layers, existence of such layers in our uh, flow field, and whether it says about how complex is the flow field. So what we did is here is that we compared a no buoyancy case, that is, uh, we, we don't have the heating with a buoyancy case, that is, we, we have a heating as well as a rotation. So this uh, this figure is a no buoyancy case and this is a buoyancy case of uh, vertical velocities and this is a no buoyancy case and this is a uh, lid rotating buoyancy case uh, uh, with lid rotating with uh, lid rotating the lid and this is a temperature cone rules that's a slice of temperature so what is interesting to note here is that um, we have uh, no fluctuations in near to these are the, these uh, dashed lines are the Sivartsen layer or here also we can see that Sivartsen layer and what you notice that the temperature cone rules show fluctuations in near to the Stevartsen layer, if you start rotating and heating. But such fluctuations are not found in uh, near to Stevartsen layer in uh, no buoyancy case. Uh, moreover, we can see uh, certain fluctuations which are growing, which, which are uh, clearly seen over here, which are not found. So uh, uh, with this, we, we also looked into a top view, that is, a, we took a section of the 
the cylinder near to the bottom plate uh, around 0.2. If you normalize by 1, it's about 0.216. And we found that uh, with just the rotating the uh, lid, that is without any heating, we found the flow to be steady and axisymmetric. But such an axisymmetric uh, flow turns to non-axisymmetric once you start heating. That means once you start heating the top, uh, bottom and cooling the top. So uh, moreover, we see that there are waves which are generated near to the, these are like azimuthal velocities conduit. And we can see that the waves are generated near to the side wall. So we can, from this, we can infer that the side, wa side wall waves um, uh, will break the axisymmetry of the system. So with such a complex uh, flow, flow dynamics, uh, we also thought of looking into how is the evolution of the nasal number or the modified nasal number in time. So what we find is that for, uh, for uh, just rotating the top lid without any heating or without any buoyancy force, we found that uh, it's a steady value of nasal number. Basically, it's a forced convection uh, without any uh, thermal uh, natural convection effect. However, uh, without any rotation, that is a, uh, uh, the classical Rayleigh Banana system for this uh, Rayleigh number 2 into 10 power 5 shows that the heat transfer oscillates. It has a periodic oscillation. However, if you start heating and rotating, that means for a Rayleigh number equals 2 into 10 power 5 and Reynolds number equals 2200, what do you find that there is a turbulence fluctuations which are happening in the bulk nasal number. So from this, we infer that uh, the complex, the advection in such complex flow field uh, causes this turbulent fluctuations in the nasal, modified nasal number, as well as uh, this causes the increased uh, heat transfer and obviously the increased modified nasal number. Uh, yes, coming to the later part of my presentation, it's about parametric study. So we thought of uh, looking into what will happen for a lid rotation, uh, rotating case, just the lid rotating case, what is happen if you start heating. So it is quite obvious that we start heating, nasal number increases. Uh, so for Rayleigh number, Rayleigh number zero, there is only just the uh, forcing part. If you go force convection part, if you go on increasing the Rayleigh number, uh, it, it, the, heat, the nasal number increases. So with this whole data, uh, we have we tabulated and we found that for a fixed Reynolds number, the nasal number increases and fixed. Uh, Raleigh number increasing Reynolds number, the Nasal number increases. This is normalized Nasal number with respect to Raleigh equals zero. So because over here it's uh, one. S oh, sorry. Uh, with this idea, we defined a, uh, uh, we defined a uh, Raleigh number effective, which has a contribution of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. And uh, we found that the Nasal number, uh, modified Nasal number uh, scales with, uh, a, with, an, uh, with a Raleigh number exponent near to one third. So, with this, I conclude that uh, there are instabilities in the Seabartson layer, which breaks the axis symmetry of the system. Uh, the plumes, uh, the heat transfer by the plume is reducing as you start rotating. So, and the advection in such a complex flow field is the responsible uh, is responsible for the enhanced heat transfer if you start rotating. And finally, we found a new scaling law uh, for the lead rotating RBC, we, and with an exponent near to one third. Yeah. So with this, I summarize and uh, such a study. Uh, such a, we are we, we are yet waiting for experiments to validate our results. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Pardon. Uh, I didn't get you. I'm sorry. So you show the picture. Ah, uh, yes. So you transit from the uh, convection that yes. to the rotation. That yes. And the last one. Yes. Why is different from the previous? Why one thousand different from two thousand two hundred? Oh, uh, you mean? Oh, here, right? Yeah. You mean the difference between this and this? Uh, yes, yes. So it's actually uh, a vortex. You can see the vortex core over here. So if you start increasing for the Reynolds number, uh, this vortex core actually breaks down uh, to a the vortex the vortex core core breakdowns break down. But it is warm. It is warm, so the centrifugal should should compress the axis. 
Yes, yes, that's what. First, is it expands further, it expands, and then it compresses, and again it expands. So there's a region of W equals zero forming. Or basically, if you draw a streamline over here, we can see there's a closed bubble. So it's such bubbles are called vortex breakdown bubbles. But the green one is denser when we. No, no, it's not. A, a green one is a W contour. Huh? It's a velocity contour, vertical velocity contour. It's not a temperature, I'm sorry. It's, not a, it's a vertical con uh, velocity contour. So I, did, I just want to uh, show the vortex breakdown bubble which is generated due to higher rotation. Okay. Thanks, Sergey. Uh, Actually, I didn't think about it. Maybe. Uh, 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 yeah, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, I think the same thing. Yes. 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 Thanks. <laughs>